What's up, guys? Welcome back to News Wave. It's Friday, which is great because for everyone who's been uh, working throughout the week, you get the whole weekend to kind of play some games. And that means this is the last Friday until Octopath Traveler does release next Friday. So I'm excited for that, by the way. That's going to be really cool, and I'm ready for it. We actually are going to talk about it briefly here as well because I, I can't stop thinking about this game. I did manage to get in for the special edition because it popped back up on Amazon, so I'm excited for that too. We'll, we'll see when they decide to ship it. I have a feeling uh, it comes out the 13th and I'll see it October 13th or so. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I have a feeling they're going to be pushing it back quite a bit because of the demand for the special edition. It pops up, it sells out, but I'm in this time. I didn't miss it, so that's great. But yeah, let, let's start with Octopath Traveler while we're on the topic now, and uh, let, let's talk about some of the inspiration for this game, because we did have the, the Japan Expo in France, and they had the producer there for Octopath Traveler, and they talked a few about a few things with Jux Video, who did talk a bit about the inspiration for the game, and the biggest one, according to them, is that they were inspired from the mechanics of Final Fantasy VI, which is a classic. Final Fantasy VI, of course, in Japan knows Final Fantasy VI, over here in the West, known as Final Fantasy III, they had to rename it because, you know, Square had to be confusing about it and everything. No, it was because the, the names got all messed up and everything. Anyway, Final Fantasy VI is, no, is really known by a lot of people as being one of the best Final Fantasies. Some people say it's better than any other one. Seven, five, six for a lot of people is like the culmination of the series. And when I heard that, because I love Final Fantasy VI, by the way, or three as we know it here. I've, I've even had a, a repro built this is Final Fantasy VI with the translation and everything straight up because I, I like that game a lot. And of course, it was also on the Super Nintendo Classic Mini, which is, which is the game I started playing right away. Uh, when I heard that, I'm already hyped for this game. The hype level keeps going up. Like, I'm ready to get to this this next Friday. It's so far away, isn't it? I really hope Amazon actually gets my order out because I want to get that, the Wayfair edition and everything and check it out. It's going to be a long wait. It's it's going to be a long seven days. Um, so we'll we'll see. Let me know what you guys think about that. Hearing Final Fantasy VI as a part of the inspiration for the battle mechanics, just me mechanics in general, that this game has to be like the, uh, I guess, old school RPG that most of the people like me who are in our, you know, like late 20s, early 30s have been waiting for for a while now. Next up, let's talk about Inside Xbox because we know when the next one will be. It's happening July 10th. And the thing about Inside Xbox is sometimes they drag on a little too long uh, where it gets kind of boring. They did the whole escape room which seemed like a big waste of time. It's not like, I feel like they want it to be similar to Nintendo Direct. It's not quite there because Nintendo Directs move quickly. I get what they're trying to do with Inside Xbox and I really appreciate it because I miss kind of the uh, TV, uh, I guess, chat, like G4, I miss that channel with, with video games. So I like to see stuff with production value like this happen. It's, it's obviously more live than what the Direct, Nintendo Direct is. But it is happening July 10th. They have a few things they're going to go over here. That does include Forza Horizon 4, We Happy Few, Earthfall, the latest news from Xbox Game Pass, which means I assume they're going to announce something there. I, I'm kind of thinking maybe the Master Chief Collection. And then according to them, they'll have a bunch of secrets that are under wraps, and they'll be ready to reveal during that show. Again, this all goes down July 10th at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, and you'll be able to watch it, I believe, on YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, uh, even on your Xbox itself. So it's going to be a good time, and uh, hopefully they have some good announcements, because they've had some good ones, and then they've had some inside Xbox that just felt like they went on for 20 hours. Oh, and if you were missing Retro Studios or your worries they were closing down, well, you don't have to be worried, because it looks like they are still alive after they posted on their Twitter account with after what feels like forever. And it was pretty much just them wishing everyone a happy 4th of July. And you see them once again making references to meat where they're cutting up what appears to be prime rib or just rib in general. Uh, and you know what that means, obviously. That means, you know, Metroid Prime Trilogy is, is happening. It's prime rib, you know. They're busy porting Prime Trilogy, right? Or, yeah, maybe they just maybe they just really like meat. I I don't know. You guys love to let me know what you, what you think about a possible Prime Trilogy. I feel like we hear about that a lot. And honestly, I'd be shocked if that wasn't happening. That could be something they're handling in-house right now alongside, apparently, their Star Fox racing game. But good to know they're at least still alive if basically still invisible outside of their 
Twitter account. All right, with that stuff out of the way, guys, let's get into some of the bigger news, starting with RPG Maker MV. That is coming out. Uh, it's coming out on consoles. It's been on Steam for a little while, 2015. It came out, and it basically, you can make your own RPG without having to do all the coding, right? You could pretty much, if you have an idea in your head for an RPG, a Japanese RPG-style game, you can make it. You do the whole tile sets and everything, and then, of course, you can do all the scripting, and then you can also have it, so I believe you can export it and even sell it, because I believe I see those pop up on Steam all the time, but it is coming to consoles next year, 2019, and it's going to be on the, the PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch, and this is going to be exciting for a couple of people out there, especially the creators, but there was one really cool thing that I saw that I was like, all right, that's neat. They're going to have an application that you can download that's basically called the RPG MV Player app, and what that means is you can play other people's RPGs that they spend time making, and that application is free. And when I heard that, I said, well, that's all I really want. That's all I'd really want, to be honest, is the free app that lets me play it. I'm not a big creative type person who's going to sit down and make a full RPG, but I'm the person who would go out and take a look at other people's creations, especially since you know there are going to be some people on consoles that make really, really cool in-depth RPGs that are worth playing because, like I said, I see them pop up on Steam all the time, but... Their, their RPG maker on Steam, and that has a bad name to it already with Steam. But I would like to check it out, similar to what we see with something like Mario Maker. If they have something really cool with the, the RPG maker style stuff, I'm in, I'll download the app, and I'll play it. And I hope people have a lot of fun building their own RPGs on things like the Switch, on things like the PS4 and the Xbox One. The Switch, I think, makes a ton of sense for this, because the visual style really complements that system. Even Obviously, it's not as strong as the PS4 and Xbox One, but because this... Uh, setup doesn't really push it visually. I think that'd be a cool, that'd be actually probably the best system to get it on because it's, it's a portable thing you could take with you and you don't have to work specifically at your TV the entire time. But hey, RPG Maker MV coming sometime next year, 2019, and we'll see what else we get going forward. Next up, let's talk about My Hero Academia 1's Justice because it did finally get a release date. We, we knew this was coming for a while now. We know it's coming on all systems, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. And now we have a release date, and it's kind of interesting because it's coming out the same day as Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, the thing about this is the, the anime itself has garnered a massive following. I actually really like the anime. I watch it every Saturday. I know, it's, I, I feel like a kid almost, but I watch it every Saturday. It pops up on Hulu. I watch it there, and it's a great 20, 25 minutes of my time. It's very, very fun. If you have not watched My Hero Academia at all, I recommend going back and watching it because it is a very, very good anime. It's a very unique anime, and I like the premise of it. And I think it's worth getting into. The game concerns me a bit, I'm going to be honest. After looking at it, I wasn't really sure how they were going to make a good game around this thing, especially as they're still kind of working through the story and everything. And I, don't, I didn't know if there was enough story there yet to make a full game around it. But they're going to take a shot at it. So there we go. It does look like it's going to be an arena fighter. And once again, I hear that and, and I, I get a little concerned about how much content is actually going to be in this thing. I think it'll be fun as, again, like an arena brawler. But I, I just don't know. I don't know if it's going to be the best game out there. And it comes out the same day as Red Dead Redemption 2. Me personally, I'll probably be stuck on Red Dead Redemption 2 for days after this release date. And I'll probably look into this only because... I'm a fan of the anime itself. I don't really watch a lot of anime, but I watch My Hero, and I'm at least curious about the game to see how they adapt it into a video game. So I'll be checking it out. They also have Endeavor, who's the number two hero. Uh, I, no spoilers, I can't wait for the night. Number two hero. Uh, and he he is a pre-order bonus. Very weird to see that as a pre-order bonus. But hey, I, I guess he's not a massive part of the anime, so they can kind of pull someone in and do that. I feel like they probably got done, done some other people, but hey, there you go. Endeavor will be a pre-order bonus for My Hero One's Justice, and that's out October 26th. We'll see. The good news is the group that would like this game is feels different than the group that is it's for Red Dead Redemption 2, right? Different audiences, I feel like. And honestly, because there's a massive following around the anime that's diehard at this point, I think it'll sell well specifically because the name is on it. I don't know if it'll sell well because it's actually a good game. We'll find out, though, when the reviews come out. But uh, I'm definitely looking more so towards Red Dead Redemption 2 for that day. Also, I want to point out one other thing before we move on here. It is coming out a bit earlier in Japan on the PS4 and the Switch, August 23rd. And of course, we know with the Switch, the eShop is region-free. So if it has English options, 
then you could probably just download it August 23rd from the Japanese eShop and have it early. So that would be a little interesting to me because I'll probably check it out there. But if it doesn't have English options, I, I don't know if I'll get that much out of it. But I can hope because then I can get it, you know, a couple months early and play it there. So we'll see. Next up, let's talk about the Nintendo 64 on the Nintendo Switch. See, the one thing that we've noticed recently is that hackers are trying to get all of these legacy games, these legacy systems working on the Switch after they've opened it up now for homebrew. It's only natural. You're going to see that kind of stuff happen after Nintendo has pretty much said they're mostly going to a service-based system for their virtual consoles. According to them, an evolution of the virtual console, but we haven't had confirmation on really anything outside of the NES. Well, hackers have done things like run Dolphin on the Switch. I don't think it's run very well yet, but they have done it. And now we're finding out that the Nintendo 64 is next up. And in fact, a user over on Twitter under the name Billy has been actually playing around with it. They've done a few things. Kirby 64, for example, Pokemon Stadium 2. And these are all games that run really well, actually, on the Switch. There's only one issue. There's no sound. <laughs> Not yet, anyway. In fact, according to Billy on Twitter, this is something that they'll kind of work towards as they go forward. But it does look like it's running, and it's running very well. Not that we wouldn't really expect it, as emulators built for the Tegra X1 have done pretty well, but this is a system playing in handheld mode that is playing these games very, very well. So it's exciting to see, I guess, from the homebrew side. It's probably frustrating to see if you are someone who is legitimately using your Switch without, you know, obviously opening up and doing all this stuff to it. It might be a little frustrating to see people who are hacking their system, enjoying the benefits of backing up your saves, enjoying the benefits of doing things like playing Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64 stuff and everything, even modifying some games to do some crazy stuff. I can understand why that might be a little frustrating. The backup thing is the most frustrating part, and I hope, I hope Nintendo doesn't do this thing where we get the online service and the save backup is only behind the cloud because it's behind that paywall. I would hope they give us that extra option of you can back it up yourself legitimately because that would be really frustrating and really, really annoying. But yes, I get it. Most of us want to see 64 stuff. We want to see GameCube stuff, Super Nintendo stuff, Game Boy stuff. You can go down the list. And I do think that is part of the plan for the service that they're offering. I do think it's going to take time for the service to evolve though. Like I don't, it's not going to happen day one. They've only told us a few games. I like to think they're going to surprise us by saying, hey, look, you know, Super Nintendo games are part of it. Game Boy games are part of it. And then next year, 64 games are a part of it. But uh, anytime soon, I don't think so. I, I think we're going to be waiting a while. Now, our last bit of news, let's talk about Devolver Digital because they did put out a tweet that talks about some of their future plans, uh, in, in particular for the Nintendo Switch. Now, Devolver Digital does have a pretty large back catalog, and this is what they describe on their Twitter account, as you're seeing here, where they talk about how they still have over a dozen releases for the Nintendo Switch still to come this year. Now, we do know Broforce is one of them, as they kind of alluded to it last week, so we're still waiting on that one. But then you start to wonder what other games do they have. I, I mean, they're doing Metal Wolf Chaos, and I, I don't, they haven't announced it for the Switch or anything, but they're talking about back catalog and new games, and we're already in the back half of 2018 now, so they would start, I assume, announcing them soon, is how they're saying here, in the coming weeks, the coming months, because they want to have them out, obviously, for Christmas. But we'll see. It's, it's interesting to see someone like Devolver Digital really push forward here with the Switch with some of their back catalog stuff. I just, I can't really figure out what they would be bringing forward here for the Switch. You guys are going to let me know what ideas you have for Devolver Digital down in the comments because I'm very curious what you guys think. I don't know if Metal Wolf Chaos would be coming over right away. That would be something maybe that comes over later on. But we already know about Bro Force. Let me know what else you guys think they could be bringing over, whether it's smaller indie titles or maybe some of their mid-level stuff. Let me know, guys. I'm really curious. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for Newswave today. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, guys. really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave a bunch of comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it is Nintendo 64 games on the Switch. Are you frustrated that hackers, homebrew users seem to be getting more out of their Switch than pretty much everyone else? Although some of them are getting banned for going online, but if they're not going online and they're kind of just playing offline, they seem to be getting a pretty good experience out of their Switch after opening it up. And uh, would you like to see 64 stuff show up for that online service that they have that's essentially the evolution of the virtual console? Or are you more looking forward to hopefully Super Nintendo or Game Boy or Game Boy Advance? Let me know what you want to see next after the NES because it might not necessarily be Super Nintendo. It could be a couple of things. Let me know about that one, guys. And of course, Devolver Digital. Maybe you're excited for My Hero. I'm really curious about that one since... Uh, you know, Red Deb's out on the same day. Is that going to bother you? Is that going to kind of hold you off from playing My Hero? And then, 
Of course, let me know what you think about Retro Studios and what they're continuing to hint at with this, uh, this prime rib stuff, or this rib stuff, as they've said before, where they keep cutting up meat and showing, I guess, almost like they're a cooking channel now. Maybe that's what they are. Maybe they're a cooking show. <laughs> let me know, guys, down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend, guys. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time for Newswave.